All right, and we're back for another day of trying to add some stuff to the spark light. Today's video, I'm going to put the trunk mount back on, take the plate out that I need to do because I'm going to end up having to drill it. So the first thing we're going to do, got to remove the bags, which I showed you in the brake video. I just left it up on the, oh, I forgot my damn blanket again. Yeah. I hate when I do that. I always forget to spread this moving blanket down, which is, like I said, it works perfect for laying bags on. Okay. This one here. All right, let's get this next one off. Just like so. That. And off it comes. All right. And this one can lay here. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is let's remove this backrest. This actually came with the bike when I bought it. Whoa, well, it came off a little easier than I expected. I usually have to fight with the one on the street glide. All right, let's see. Find a nice place to put this. I don't want to scratch it up. I have another moving blanket here. We'll just use that for now. I need to make racks to hang all the stuff on. I mean, I have a, I have a tour pack for the street glide. I have the fairing. I have a, a gauntlet fairing for the Sportster. I have the windshield for the Sportster. I'm going to have the windshield or the, um, yeah, the Memphis Shades windshield once I get the kit. I have the factory windshield that's going to need to be put someplace safe. So I want to make an overhead rack that I can just hook everything on with the quick, um, the quick connects and just so it can hang out of my way up off the floor so it doesn't get damaged. All right. Let's see. All right, here's the mount. Now, if you remember from the test fit video, I had a little bit of trouble getting this piece on. So what I want to do is, I think... Let me open my bottom box back up. Let's see what we got here. Oh, I had that. Yeah, that'll work. I'm going to put a little dielectric grease on the mounts, I think. This goes to the middle mount. Yes. Yes. I got to remove those um, reflectors. There's reflectors still on it. I want to remove those. And I think that gives a little more wiggle room. But I'm just going to put a little dielectric grease on these mounts and just see if that allows this to slide a little bit easier. Just like that. Because you know, like, this is, again, it's aftermarket. It's made well. There's no two ways about it. It's heavy. It's a well-made uh, piece. But the plastic grommets that hold it from rattling and hold it in place they're awful damn tight let's put it that way all right let me wipe this off and let's see what we got now with a little little grease on it see if that'll slide in easier yeah not much it's going but it's again it's awful tight I don't want to knock the bike off the damn jack either there we go that got it that's one. That's in now. Very good. Got to manhandle the damn thing. All right, so that's on there. So now you can see how that goes exactly. And like I said, it's a well-made piece. The only complaint I heard was that this hardware, the screw, evidently they need a little, um, what you call it on them. Loctite, they come apart. So I'm going to see if I can back the screw out. And just get a little bit of red Loctite on that if it runs all the way through and that's enough to hold it and it's never going to go anywhere. All right, now, let me unpack this trunk. Open this blanket here. You're not seeing what I'm doing, but I'm opening the other moving blanket up so I can lay the, the backrest so it doesn't get damaged and put this trunk on there so I can open the trunk and get out the hardware. All right, let's see. There we go. 
Okay. So this is the mounting hardware, which I'll show you. This is the kit. This is the kit that comes with it. So I don't think I'm going to use much of the kit, you know, other than the plates. I think I want to use, I'm going to drill through. As you got sliding slots here, I want to drill through the plate and then put bolts through. So this way I can slide it back and forth if I need to move it. All right, there's that. Yeah, let's see. All right, here's the plate. So that's the plate right there. Again, I think I'm just going to drill through. It's got rubber rubber mounts on. Actually, I probably can pull these rubber mounts out that the trunk sits on and drill right through those areas. And I think right about there, does that work? No, that's not going to work. I'm going to be stuck, stuck in one position if I do it there. So obviously we're going to have to take measurements. I'll have to make sure it's exactly straight where I want it. see we'll have to see how that is there because like I said I want the trunk uh, because it has a flat plate see if I take the trunk off this pops in place and then you have like a regular luggage rack which is nice I like that I like that setup like I said I've always liked the Givi brand of trunks I've had them for years they work really well so Let's see what we got here. So this actually, the way they made the plates on this, I guess it's considered a bolt through. They, they give you these flat plates. They give you these things. And I'm assuming it's for coming up through like from the bottom and then you just tighten down on it through the, uh, the squares in the rack itself. Yeah, see? They give you these little spacers. So technically I probably could run that through there and grab it there. And then I don't know if there's enough, and yeah, there's not enough meat to really grab it in the back. But I have to see where I want it first. So I put one here, one there. Might be able to put one in this corner and this corner and bolt it right to the rack without a problem. That may just do the trick. I think that might work without having to drill anything at all. But the idea is, again, I have to measure, see exactly where this trunk is going to sit, and then we can go from there. Let's see. That's closed. If we set this where it wants it, let's just see. I just want to line it up and see how far forward that is. Yeah, it's going to have to be about there, I think. And then we line it up. And then, like I said, I have this. This is what's known as, pardon the expression, a bitch pad. So these are the suction cup ones that go on the rear fender when you're running a solo seat. I think this will make the perfect backrest pad because it, it fits in place nice. So if I drill it with some J bolts, I think that would be just about perfect. I just need to figure out exactly, I think it right to the edge is where I want it. I think that's where it's got to be. Um, and we'll see once we get it lined up. See, I'm right to the edge of the, there's like the flat piece here. I'm going to line it there. And then with the pad on it, it sits right about where a passenger needs it. So I think that that'll work right there. So I think I am going to try to use the plates that it came with to mount it. And then we'll see what we got. Because then I don't have to drill anything. And if I decide down the road I want a bigger pack, I can get a bigger tour pack. So I'm thinking like right to the edge of this, right here. And then we measure each side. 
and I think that that'll fit. I really do. I think that that'll sit in place nice. But we won't know till we try it. So let me see. I think I have movement with these. I believe if I put this, like I said, this goes up from underneath. If I do it on an angle, let's see. You know, obviously they don't come with instructions anymore. Like in the old days, everything told you, hey, this is how you got to put it. That gonna, yeah, that's going to work. So what we want to do is you have these pieces here that go inside the rack. Now we're going to put one there. And then this piece come out like that or like this. In this case, I think it's going to go like that so it can draw up tight. Well, let's see. Come on, get it started there. Let's see what we got. Yeah, I think I got a fly in here now that's giving me issues. Well, all right, let's see. All right, yeah, if I tighten that up on there, I think that that will do the trick. So I want to get a nut on this. Let's see. That's the ones I want to use, and we'll see what we got. Whoop under here. I just don't like the fact that it didn't come with, um, it did not come with washers. I prefer a nice flat washer to go up underneath uh, where it has to bolt on there. So we'll see. Let's see. I got junk all over the freaking place. Do I have any washers? Yep, that's a Holly carburetor kit. That's not a flat washer. Maybe, no, I ain't gonna cut it. I can see I'm gonna have to pick up some flat washers because I ended up using them all. I was working on the cabinets in my house and I needed flat washers and I ended up using every last one of them. So what I'm gonna do is this. If I can attach this, and I'm pretty sure it has to go. And then this will go on here. And now we run this like this. That's one. Because I think I can drop it through. And then once I have it lined up, just reach through and turn these and then snug them down. And I think that that'll do the trick. I'll be honest with you. I think that that's going to work perfect so I want to put one in this hole here this makes it a little bit easier for mounting um, at least they did do that for you because yeah, it does give you a little bit of a little bit of leeway to work with the way they designed it so the idea is if it's just going to snug down enough to to do what needs to be done all right let's see put them like that and then like I said these will turn and then we'll run the, like that, right in the corner. And that should do the trick. So what I'm gonna do is, when I get it in there, this is gonna be turned like this on an angle and then clamped down on each side. So that should do the trick. And then, like I said, I can figure out where I wanna put the back ones. But right now, we just, I wanna make sure we have the measurements right here. Again, I'm gonna go, there's, it's flat here. Okay, let me show you, bring you around. This area is flat, so I want to line that up with the exact edge of the tour pack. Because like I said, once it's locked down with the, the, um, the pad on it, that should be just right for a passenger to lean up against and not have an issue. And I can still get to the, the nut here, I believe, so we're going to try and make sure we can get to that to get that off. I don't really like this thing anyway. Yeah, we can still get it off with the trunk out of the way. I don't like this anyway. I usually put security screws in there with a, um, a license plate bolt cover, uh, a Harley license plate, so that way it looks good. I don't know if I can see the one on my street glide here. Yeah, yeah, here you go. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. And what it is, it's a security screw that goes in. And then I just cover it with that right there. It's got a Harley number one on it. And you put that and that protects the screw, but also nobody can steal your, like if you have like that heat, that seat's heated. That's a do-it-yourself heated seat that I did. I don't want anybody to snag that. So, 
So again, I think right here, line this up because that'll keep it straight front to back. And then I just got to get the side where I need it. So before we do anything else, let me do this. I'm going to figure out it's probably an eight millimeter. Let's see. What we got here? We've got. No, a 10, is it a 10? Yep, looks like it's a 10. A 10. Yeah, that's a 10 millimeter nut. So that should make this a 4, 5 millimeter Allen head. Yep, perfect. So that's that. Make sure we got the tools out. Okay, 10 millimeter, 5 millimeter Allen head. This nut belongs over here. And these are lock nuts, so once we wrench it down, it should stay where we need it and not have an issue. So again, my front to back is going to be lined up with this plate exactly. And then side to side, I'm going to take the narrowest point and measure, and we're going to put it exactly the same on each side. There. That's what we want right there. So now what are we looking at? Eighth of an inch. And eighth of an inch. All right, so eighth of an inch side to side. And then that's with this plate exactly where it needs to be here. So what we got to do now is I got to try to run this in without moving it. Again, they don't give you... Oh, of course it moves. So I, I got to run this down first. So we get to where we win to snug it. Just got to make sure I leave enough play so I can adjust as necessary. Okay. All right. Well, that's just not... That is not conducive to working smart. So let's see if we can work smart here. Let's try this. Let's see what we got here. Uh, we want four to three eighths. And let's put this on here. Let's try this. See if this is a little bit smarter to work with. I think that's a little bit smarter. And let's get this one run down. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to run them down to where I can then pivot and then the lock in place. And we'll see what we got. Hopefully my big head's not in the way. Okay. Now, get back lined up. that off a little bit. I went a little too snug on this one. Can't pivot it. There we go. Now we can turn it. Okay. That, that way. That one goes that way. Actually, I think I need to adjust this. I don't like how this one's laying, so I'm going to readjust this side. I just want to turn the the piece around. What happens is you can go forward and backwards and side to side with it the way they made it. So I have the one side correct for what how I want to mount it, but the other side did not go in place where I want it. So so what I'm doing now is I'm just adjusting this. And then we're going to run it back down. But I could see once I'm done with this, I'm going to take these out and I'm going to end up cutting them down. We're going to cut the bolts down because they're way too long. So, but once you get it in place, then you can do what you got to do. Come on. Do this without dropping stuff. Ah, get back on there. All right. Now we're cooking with gas, not electric, it's not efficient. So we're going to cook with gas. 
All right, very good. So now I just want to run this back down to where I need it. And then this way it's almost in place for adjustment. Now, let's see. I'm going to... And again, I'm going to angle them. I'm going to put them caddy corner so they're grabbing the tour pack mount on both sides, grabbing the rack. Okay, so that's lined back up there. Let me get my side to side measurement and then I can snug those down and we'll see what we got, see how it looks. Right there, that's that side. And then we'll go back to this side. A little far over. right there again it's like an eighth of an inch each way so that's where we want to be all right that looks pretty good front to back slide because it slid on me just double check eighth eighth okay so that's centered now so now it's just a matter of snugging that down and then we'll see where we're at see if we could do this without moving it And it's moving as I'm tightening it down. So, yes, of course, you're sliding. Okay. Well, that didn't work too well right there. As I'm tightening it down, it's actually sliding. So, let me snug this one down a little bit more. And then we'll just dead blow hammer it if I have to. Are you even turning? What the hell is it doing? Okay, try this again. It's not, wow. They're nice. I, I do like the brackets, but they are fiddly, as they say in England. It's fiddly. All right, let's try this again. All right, that's lined up there. Actually, I should just put a piece of tape too far over that way. Come back this way a little bit. That's good. Once again, make sure we got enough battery power. We're still recording, yes. That has to go over just a little more. Right there. Okay, that's lined up. Let's try this again. See if we can hold it in place while we snug it down. I want them to the outer edge is what I'm after. So I don't know if I can put something in there to help stop it from sliding. I don't know if this will this stay. It might. Maybe. I don't know. We're going to see. Because I got it right where I want it. I just don't want the dang thing to slide now. Get up in there. good front to back. Yep, we're still good there. That's snug. And I got the one snug that shouldn't move on me. Okay. That's that. Yeah, see, that's not going to go anywhere now. There we go. So that's that. See where we're at here. Ain't going to move. Double check my measurements, it looks good. Doesn't look like it's moved from side to side. That's good on there, so obviously if that side's good, this side should be good. Didn't move front to back, that's perfect. We'll get the back mounts in now, and we'll see where we're at. So again, these things, you know, they slide, they give you room to work back and forth. So, let's see, do I wanna be this one? I think. Yeah, see, that'll work perfect right there, and then I'll put one in that corner, and then they're all perfectly lined up to where 
exactly where they're supposed to be. So it should do the trick. Okay. Get this started. Reach up under. Come on. Okay, that's that one. You know, again, I keep it to the side. Should do the trick where we need it. Come on. On that damn nut there. Just running it down, and once I get it where I need it, then I'll go ahead and snug it on onto the bracket. So I'll show you underneath what it looks like once I get it in place. But right now I'm just trying to run these down so it doesn't move. All right, turn sideways. Very good. Just like that is where we want it. Okay, we're not on the nut. Come on. There we go. Now we're on it. Now, turn that a little bit and snug that one down. Good thing I don't have smell o vision because I'll tell you what. Somebody hit a skunk over on our in our intersection and it's freaking reeking something fierce. All right. That's that. I got one more to put on. Yeah. Let me pause it. My wife's calling me. All right, I'm back. She had an issue with the dead skunk. Asking me for the number for animal control, and unfortunately, I don't happen to know it off the top of my head, so they could come pick the damn thing up. I don't know. Again, I have no idea what the number is. So, all right, let's see if I'm on that. I can run this down. Nope, not on it at all. Come on. There we go. Now we're getting it. Get this run down. Snug it and we'll pop the trunk on, see where we're at. If I have to adjust it, it'll be easy enough to adjust. Uh, just a matter of loosening these things a little bit. Okay. Just about there. Pop that down loose a little bit. It went a little too tight. A little more. There we go. That they're kind of spring loaded, I guess is what I want to say. So just gotta get this done because I gotta go somewhere with my son a little bit. All right, snug. Snug. This one, snug. One more. Ah, gotta get that one from the other side. All right, let's go this way. go very good okay so that mount is on there it ain't going anywhere nice and tight so all right let's see what our trunk looks like get that and like I said I think this will do the trick nicely it's just enough again it's for a full face helmet size but also a nice overnight bag These things back in the day they were made it was actually made from metal not plastic like they are now there we go that got it on and then let's see there we go and then that opens that so that's that that's on there tight that ain't going anywhere again put that and then locks down like that take the key out and you got a nice 
nice trunk, and it's flat black, so it matches the um, the saddlebags, I think, pretty well. I think it'll do the trick. Again, for what I need, I think it's perfect. And again, you turn it all the way, push this button, and it completely unlocks. So, so you can't lose your key because you have to have the key in hand in order to shut this. You can't take that out. You can't latch it. So that has to be like that. And then again, push in, push down, turn the key, off it is. So there you go. So, not bad. I don't think it's too bad of a deal. Um, I think it fits the lines of the bike. Actually reminds me of a King Tour Pack is what it reminds me of. So, put the saddlebags back on. Let's see what we got. See how it looks with them on there. place that's locked very good get the other side and I think we're in business just the only thing I have left to do is the um, the backrest which I have to put on yet so oh, line up a little bit easier to work with but also got to get these mounts lined up perfect so that way it goes on Okay, very good. Let's see what we got. There's your overall look with it. Not bad at all. Again, this is a Givi, a uh, size of 34 something, if I remember correctly. Again, the flat black matches, so it looks good. It's on there. Snug, it ain't going nowhere. So that should, like I said, that should do the trick nicely. Um, and then again, I got to get some J hooks. So you see there's an extra hole here, previous owner put. So what I'm going to do is pull the suction cups out, and I'll drill a hole right next to that, and then probably put, I'll probably do three points, maybe four points. Um, let's see, make sure you guys can see what the heck I'm talking about. Okay, drill the hole here. So J-hook goes in, pulls through, 5 16ths, drill a hole here, pull the suction cups where that is, and put one over here. I think three should do the trick. And then, like I said, that will, that'll go right here perfectly. And with the J-hooks right in the middle, I think that's a perfect backrest pad. So nice and comfortable. And then, again, screw it to the lid inside, run it down, and I'll have to trim those, uh, trim the ends of those off too, because they're usually pretty long. But I think that that'll look, that'll look perfect on there. Everything else matches, and this way it'll, it'll match, so... And that'll be in another video. All right, well, there you go. You see what it's like to mount. Uh, not hard. This, again, is uh, TCMT, I think it is, or Xmodo, whatever, off of Amazon for $106 ship with New Jersey tax. This trunk cost me 100 I want to say 118 off of Amazon. It was on sale when I caught it. I don't know if it's still, still on sale or not. I don't know what the price is. But again, they're, the size of these things is perfect. Where do I put the keys now? There we go. So the size of these is perfect. Now, and they fit a full face helmet. So again, it's, you know, plenty big enough. You can put an overnight bag in here. Like if you're, if you're traveling, stuff that you use during the day can go in the top. And then you can put your luggage in there. So between the three things now, I have enough room to hold probably 15 days worth of clothes. So we'll see. In any case, as I always say, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Um, and again, comment if, if uh, this helps you out, which hopefully it does. Um, you know, make a comment. Tell me. Because, uh, you know, uh, YouTube looks for that. That's their analytics program looks for that. So they're looking for that uh, information from people. Like, oh, okay, this guy helped me out. And then that's, that's how they move your videos further up into their feed. So I just wanted to show you this real quick. You see how long they are. Okay, not killer bad. You see how they mount? So it's between the plates on each side all the way around, snug down. 
So I will take it when I take it off. I'll take them back off one at a time. And then I will trim those bolts or just go buy shorter Allen heads um, and throw some red Loctite on because it's never going to have to come off of there. Not for now, anyway. If it has to, it's easy enough to do. So, all right. That's it for today. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.